There is one and only cause, the cause all has in our own awareness. As far as the monistic system, let's say Kashmir Shaivism is concerned, one and the only agent here is Shiva, your and my awareness. So look at it, at this whole phenomena, with the eye of that non-dual understanding and see how you can then begin to dissolve this, begin to appease these experiences. It's a bit, a bit of a background, so I'll read it quickly. A bit of a background. I have very little knowledge of Trika Shaivism. I'm simply devoted and serving the one, like Shiva or Jesus. There are stories of Shiva and demons, or Jesus and the devil, masquerading as the angel of, angel of light. I have experiences of what I would call attacks from dark forces or energies that I do not fully understand or physically see, but I do feel. If I remember correctly, I have heard you mention the battle of dark and light forces in the context of the affairs of the world. Question. Were you speaking of similar experiences and maybe have something to share or advice to give, or did you mean something else? Are there, are there demons, dark spirits, an angel of light masquerading around, not just symbolically or metaphorically, or are they illusions of the mind? Another good question. And this question following up, following up the choice of predestination are interconnected. So in other words, everything that was just said in response to whether we choose our thoughts or do our thoughts appear to us is applicable with regard to this, what you're asking when we speak of these dark forces or energies, whether these are actual realities, entities out there, or they are illusions of the mind. I want to uh, suggest to you that everything is in the mind. The whole entire world is in the mind. Mind can be equated with the world. This is proper understanding. Just This is why earlier on I brought that Shiva Sutra's um, aphorism, mind is consciousness. See? So human mind is not a human mind. It's, yes, we can speak of it as human mind, maybe when it is appears as that very, very limited, finite expression of the ultimate expression of that uh, big, divine, infinite, all-encompassing. That big, divine, all-encompassing is consciousness. And mind and consciousness are one. Everything, every phenomena that appears to us whether in a physical form as this, what I'm surrounded by in this room, this quality of light, the solid appearance of this table, objects, this computer system, everything, camera, windows, landscape outside of my room. All these are physical manifestations, let's say, immediately opened and at the expense of my senses and sense perception. But there are also other dimensions, subtle dimensions that are not something that one can see with one's eyes, um, use the organ of cognition of the sense of smell, taste, tongue or touch. There are other manifestations at a subtle level. And there is the full myriad of these manifestations from angelic to demonic, just as there are different manifestations on this phenomenal plane of existence. There are extraordinary, um, beautiful flowers exhuming perfume of extraordinary level 
of complexity yeah, through the fragrant, you know, oozing. And there are places where, you know, like sewages and like the place of dwelling of mala, other, and all God knows what not. That's at the level of physical reality. That same level exists in a subtle reality. The world of inner heavens filled with fragrances and, you know, and beauty and beatitude and the world filled with um, all that what is much, much less pleasant to behold. So all this is likewise in the mind, all, all of it. The solidity of this world, the apparent uh, permanence also of this world, we know that it's not permanent, it will all decay, but it appears, if, at least right now, solid, have shape, have density, right? That same what we experience on a physical level, to the refinement of that movement of air lingering of the incense belongs also that whole strata at the subtle levels where all these worlds are inhibited by various different forms of energy. Think of, think of them as forms of energy, forms of energy of your own consciousness. So this battle is a late motive of many scriptures, not just Hindu, many epics out there to illustrate this um, in a way, we can call it tension, we could call it strife, we could call it what have you, between the beings of light and beings of darkness, like in the Vedic story of churning of the ocean of being, both are engaged in the act, the beings of light and beings of darkness, the goodies and the bodies doing the same job. They holding gigantic serpent session, one at the head and other ones at the tail and whipping that ocean so that the nectar of immortality can rise to the surface. That nectar of immortality, that Amritam rises to the surface, rises and at that very moment when it has risen, there concerted prior to that, equally put effort goes into jeopardy. Why? Because there and then this drama of life enters according to this epic. Because purportedly, Shiva already behind the scenes promised devas, the goodies, the beings of light, that once the Ambrose is there, once the Amritam is there, they will be the ones to get the coveted prize. So Asuras, although they are also worshippers of Shiva and have been as much involved in this world, end up being tricked. Devas run away with the goods. They run away with the nectar of immortality. And hence, the world, as it were, there and then set into this conflicting scenario, which would need to be then reconciled by us human beings in each and our own ways, because that primordial original harmony was disturbed. You see, a certain karma already set in motion. The devas would be pursued by asuras, the beings of darkness, for that act of treachery, act of whatever, see? So this, not to um, take you now on a detour, but this is just like to give you this, so that you don't end up with do's and don'ts, black and white understanding, so that you can see in all this, in all this, there is some original cause of it, but as we go down to the very, very cause of it all, there is one and only cause, the cause all has in our own awareness, as far as the monistic system, let's say, of Kashmir Shaivism is concerned. One and the only agent here is Shiva, your and my awareness. 
So look at it, at this whole phenomena, what the eye of that non-dual understanding, and see how you can then begin to dissolve this, begin to appease these experiences that at times come and begin to bother us at the level of the psyche. Some people have even these experiences they claim to be more somatic in nature. But all, essentially speaking, is interconnected in the way that I have just attempted to outline for you.